To complement what we have studied so far, uh, let us look at one example where the game theoretic ideas that we have uh, discussed in the previous modules is being used in practice. And that is, this is in the context of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. The slides are actually uh, adapted from a similar course, CS186 uh, uh, at Harvard University. And the images that I'm going to use in these slides are actually from the, from the book of the of that instructors. So uh, what is peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and how is it uh, useful in, uh, in practice? So on the left hand side we have shown the traditional uh, server client model for downloading uh, files and the right hand side uh, we have the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing. So in the uh, traditional model of uh, server and client, there are typically one or few servers and there are many users. And as the number of users increase, because each of these servers have a fixed uplink uh, bandwidth, and the, the download rate per user is actually going down. Whereas in peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, there is no fixed server and no fixed client. Uh, each of the users uh, ha are having the dual role of uh, acting as a server as well as a client. So therefore, whenever they are getting some pieces of a file or maybe some file that, that they have downloaded, they also act as a server to share that file with the other users. And that is the principle of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, file sharing. Uh, in an ideal peer-to-peer -peer system, if the number of users increase, that means uh, the server as well as the client increases proportionately and uh, the, there, there is no effect on the download rate per user. So that is one of the advantages of using peer-to-peer -peer, and it is uh, being used in, in various uh, applications. In this slide, we are going to look at some of the advantages of using peer-to-peer -peer file sharing and uh, some terminology that we'll be using in the rest of the uh, module. So the advantage of peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing, as we have said, that if the number of uh, uh, users increase, that also increases the number of servers and therefore it is scalable. Um, uh, the download rate is not uh, seriously affected if there are lots of uh, users who are trying to down download files. And it is also failure resilient. So imagine a situation where there was only one server and if that server goes down, nobody can download uh, the file. While in peer-to-peer -peer, uh, file sharing, every uh, user has some copy of that file and it is very likely that even though some of these peers disappear or some of the servers go down, then, then also the other users are capable of downloading this file, maybe from some other peers. So in the peer-to-peer -peer world, by protocol will mean the, the rules through which the, these messages can be sent and also the actions that can be taken over a network. We will discuss a few protocols, peer-to-peer -peer protocols, and that uh, essentially lays down the, the rules, uh, how this message exchange and also the actions of different users are, are done. So a client is essentially a, a process of sending messages and taking actions. So client, uh, of course, is, is also a, an user who is trying to download some files, but at the same time, uh, looking at a more abstract level, it is essentially the process that is generating those messages or taking those actions. Uh, oftentimes, we will also uh, refer to a reference client, which is kind of the, uh, the standard client, which has been prescribed by the protocol. Uh, uh, this is going to be a very specific uh, implementation. And whenever we are talking about certain game theoretic properties, we are uh, uh, using this reference protocol as the benchmark and how other clients can behave differently. And peer in this case uh, uh, are the, uh, the individuals who are running these clients um, uh, using or misusing the protocol in some way and in some sense they are the players in, in this uh, game theoretic setup. So let us look at uh, the, the historical development of peer-to-peer uh, -peer technologies. Uh, 
the first peer-to-peer -peer technology to come up was Napster, which came about in 1999, and it uh, closed down to two years later. It had a centralized database, which uh, uh, had all the files, uh, and uh, the users could download music from each other. Uh, so the, the database kept a uh, control over uh, who has which files. Uh, this is the this is the uh, purpose of uh, maintaining that database. And whenever some user was trying to find some music, uh, they were actually uh, uh, contacting those uh, other users who has that music and they were downloading. The reason for uh, closing down was uh, primarily because some of this music were copyrighted and uh, there was violations in, in, in terms of this peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing. The second one, uh, which is uh, which was uh, relatively more popular and also uh, is being used even today, so it came about in uh, 2000, and this is called Nutella. So, uh, how does Nutella work? It gets first the list of uh, the IP addresses of the peers from a known set, uh, uh, from a set of known peers. So there is no server anymore. Um, the the peers essentially gets the addresses uh, from some uh, other known peers and now how um, uh, the the peer to peer file sharing works if a, a specific uh, peer wants to get a, a, a certain file then it uh, broadcasts a message uh, to to its known peers and the, uh, this query will be responded by some some other user let's say user b if it has the desired file and this desired file will be this message will be first responded and uh, then uh, uh, a can download a is the requester and b is uh, the user who has that file uh, a can then download this file directly from from b but uh, notice that it, it downloads the whole file in one go now if you look at uh, uh, this uh, situation of nutella uh, in the uh, in a in the light of game theory you can see that uh, each of these uh, players, um, and, and let us assume that there are only two players. One, uh, both of them can either share that file or can free write. So that means that they are not going to share any any file. Uh, they are only going to uh, download the file from others. Now, uh, this uh, game matrix essentially shows how much utility or benefit that they get. Uh, when they uh, pick a certain strategy profile. So if both the players are uh, sharing, so imagining that they have a complementary uh, file, so player one is trying to download, let's say, a uh, music file, and player two is trying to download some other file, let's say, a book file. And uh, if both of them share, then both of them get some positive payoff, which is denoted by two, uh, This their utility are two. And if both of them free write, try to free write, then uh, none of them essentially share anything. So they do not also get any file uh, and they do not share anything as well. So, uh, but the interesting thing as before happens uh, yeah, when one uh, of this user, one of these players free write and the other one shares. So then the, sh uh, the person who is sharing, the player who is sharing, uh, it actually gets a negative payoff because it is uh, uploading. So its upload bandwidth is being uh, used up, but it is not getting the file that it was looking for. While the, the free riding uh, uh, player is now getting the, the file that it desires and it also does not have any upload bandwidth, therefore it gets the file uh, a little faster. So therefore it gets a higher payoff. Now this situation is essentially very similar to the neighboring kingdoms dilemma if you remember. So if, uh, uh, if you see in this game, free riding is a strictly dominant strategy for both these players. And uh, that gives the sorry state uh, of uh, the, the uh, strongly dominant strategy equilibrium of free ride, comma free ride, uh, which does not give any of these players any payoff. Uh, so, but that is that is uh, a predictable outcome. So, uh, Nutella actually suffers from this problem because uh, it does not take any care of any strategic aspects of of these players. And this is not just uh, uh, in theory. In fact, uh, there has been studies, and this uh, study has been done done by Adder and Huberman, as uh, you can see in this uh, 
uh, in the references. So it says uh, in, in this figure it uh, shows uh, the rank ordering of some 33,000 uh, hosts, different hosts who are running in Nutella. And uh, you can see that only very few number of uh, hosts are actually sharing a huge number of files. So that might be perhaps that they, uh, they do not pay for those uh, upload bandwidth or maybe uh, for some other reasons, uh, their own uh, altruism. But uh, these numbers are uh, much, much less than the number of total hosts who are using this. So out of this 30,000, uh, 33,000 hosts, uh, just one third of them are actually sharing some amount of file, uh, even though uh, these uh, files are uh, actually, the, the sh number of files shared are actually much smaller. The Y axis is essentially a log axis. And uh, almost two thirds of the population is not sharing anything, they're just free riding. So this um, threat uh, of, of not sharing and free riding is actually real. Now, one can actually argue that uh, why don't you uh, um, stop this uh, situation by developing a reference client. Uh, maybe uh, um, you can define design a client which does not allow people to choke or unchoke uh, this kind of upload links but uh, you can see that there are then uh, different kinds of client developers and it will not be very difficult to uh, develop a client or write a, a new client uh, which uh, ensures file sharing um, and uh, allows people to choke their upload bandwidth so so that is uh, essentially uh, what was the summary for Nutella. 85% of the peers actually free, free wrote the system by, by 2005. And uh, today Nutella has less than 1% of worldwide peer-to-peer -peer traffic. Um, so this is a data from 2013, but uh, I believe that the numbers are uh, almost the same even today. So there were a few other peer-to-peer -peer -peer systems uh, like Nutella and uh, who also did not care for the strategic uh, behaviors of these uh, users and they also made the same fate. They are not really very popular or used. Now here comes the, the next protocol which is, uh, which is uh, quite popular starting from 2001 uh, and uh, uh, today yeah, almost 85% of the peer-to-peer -peer traffic in the United States is actually uh, through BitTorrent. So um, uh, this, this is typically used for large file sharing. So for instance, uh, uh, softwares or other uh, bigger files, um, um, particularly the open source uh, software distributions are actually shared using BitTorrent client. Now, what is the difference between this BitTorrent and its pre uh, predecessors? So the key innovation that uh, BitTorrent has actually brought in is to break the large file into smaller pieces. The advantage is that you, you can now uh, pretend as if this, this is a repeated game. So instead of giving the whole file in one go, uh, you uh, divide a large file, let's say in 100 or 1000 pieces, and it's a 100 or 1000 uh, round repeated game. And the driving principle uh, goes as follows. Uh, the, the BitTorrent client says that if you let me download, then I will also reciprocate. And this uh, uh, client is actually running in every use, user's uh, system, every of those peer system, and they are using the same principle. So it is only sharing uh, with those uh, other peers who are actually letting this uh, peer download. So here is a, a little um, uh, detailed view of the, the underlying engineering of uh, BitTorrent. So uh, typically you will find a, a torrent file which has a lot of information. So um, the, the name of uh, which file you are looking for, uh, it's a SHA1 fingerprint, file size, and there is an important thing called the tracker URL among other things. Now this torrent file is typically you find it uh, from certain websites. So suppose if you are looking for a specific uh, uh, Linux distribution, you go to a, uh, you search for that um, uh, torrent file and you will possibly hit a, a directory where you can find all the links of this torrent. And uh, you go to that torrent file, download that torrent file. It has all this information, including the tracker URL. Now, what is a tracker? 
tracker is a is a something like a planner or uh, a centralized uh, entity which is actually uh, keeping the list of all the peers and it is dynamically getting updated so tracker as the name suggests it is tracking all the uh, peers who has this specific file uh, given in this torrent file and it is uh, keeping their ip addresses their port numbers and if the uh, if the PA, if a new peer now comes in it will add that entry in, into its list of peer uh, and also if some some peer goes down it will delete it so dynamically this tracker is tracking uh, the status of this file in the internet so that uh, is uh, is the uh, how the tracker and the torrent file looks like now, what does this uh, BitTorrent client or the the protocol um, uh, using? So, BitTorrent uses an algorithm what is known, uh, which is known as the optimistic unchoking algorithm. So, as I said, the uh, tracker is a centralized entity that controls this traffic, tracks the connection between peers and their speed of upload and various other parameters. It is it is essentially tracking everything. Now, the reference client or the standard client that BitTorrent uses, uh, it sets a specific threshold of uploading speed. Um, how this threshold is uh, set it typically depends on the implementation. Uh, in this, uh, in the most common case, the third maximum speed in the recent past. Uh, but uh, suppose that is given to you first. Now, it uses um, uh, this protocol. If peer, peer J uploaded to I, at a rate greater than or equal to uh, r then this peer i will actually unchoke j in the next period so it is just saying that uh, if you are download if you are uh, allowing me uh, to download at a at, at a rate which is uh, above that threshold then i am going to unchoke you and i will also share files with you but if if it is less than r then it will be choked so it will not be uh, allowed to download files uh, from from this particular user so this particular uh, peer is i so fair enough this is just a just a simple teach for that so if you are uh, allowing me to download then i will also allow you to download otherwise not the algorithm could have stopped at this point but then there is a problem and the problem here is that uh, what to do with uh, some peers which has just appeared so for instance a peer who which has uh, just come and uh, it is uh, it is unfair to uh, choke that um, uh, that uh, peer because it has no files so how can it actually share how can it actually upload at a specific rate so that is where this optimistic unchoking part is is coming in if it does not unchoke those kind of uh, peers then they will remain choked forever how uh, it uh, unchokes is essentially a, a heuristic but uh, uh, the way it does is after three time periods a peer i optimistically unchokes uh, some other random peer from its neighborhood who is currently choked and leave that peer unchoked for three time periods and then choke again and uh, keep on doing this until it uh, comes to the first state where it is it has sufficient number of uh, sufficient amount of file which it can upload and then it will it will move it to that uh, to that unchoked state if it is uh, above r if it is less than r then it, it will be choked now this is essentially this uh, optimistic unchoking algorithm uh, is a slight variation of of the of that repeated game we discussed so it is just uh, doing this protocol of tit for tat uh, so this uh, the seeder who is actually sharing this file and the leacher who is actually the, the client uh, of downloading that file is nothing but a repeated prisoner's dilemma. Now, the strategy of this seeder or this reference cl client protocol is nothing but that tit for tat. So, tit for tat is a standard uh, uh, standard technique for prisoner's dilemma in repeated prisoner's dilemma. So, uh, which says that if you cooperate, so there are two uh, uh, strategies cooperate and defect. If you cooperate, then I will also cooperate. The moment you start defecting, I will also defect until the point you start cooperating again. So let us uh, look at uh, one small illustration of, uh, uh, of how this works. So here you, you can see that there are a bunch of uh, peers uh, who does not have any, uh, any file and there are two files. Uh, 
uh, two peers which has uh, all these files. Uh, if it was using this reference client, client protocol without that optimistic and choking part, then uh, none of this new uh, uh, peers would have got any file. So initially you can see that it is sending in a burst of three and uh, that is essentially due to this uh, optimistic and choking part. Now once some of these files are received by these uh, users, they also start transmitting to other users. Uh, and once they start transmitting, uh, they come into that first category where their upload rate is also above that uh, above that uh, threshold and therefore they will also get uh, files from other users. So this is uh, essentially uh, uh, pictorially showing how uh, optimistic unchoking algorithm in BitTorrent works and let us, uh, let us allow this to complete. We'll come back and see this at the end of the module. So what can be some strategic uh, behaviors in this uh, BitTorrent system? So uh, even though uh, this, is, uh, this is quite robust uh, compared to Nutella and other kind of peer-to-peer um, uh, uh, -peer file sharing systems, it also uh, allows for certain um, strategic behaviors. So some of these strategic behaviors could be like how often to contact tracker because the moment you contact tracker, it is going to give you some some peers and uh, you can exploit the optimistic and choking part uh, and uh, uh, maybe you can uh, avoid uh, uploading files uh, still. The second strategic behavior could be which pieces to reveal because the pieces are also uh, have different demands. So there might be some files which are very much in demand or some pieces of that file is very much in demand. Uh, there might be some other pieces which are not so much in demand. Should you, uh, so if you are doing this uh, exchange um, uh, policy that you are going to uh, give files, uh, some pieces of files to some other user in exchange of uh, certain other pieces, which uh, piece should you reveal? Now, there are several other kind of strategic behaviors, how many upload slots, these are going into the nitty gritty details of, uh, of how uh, the peer peer-to-peer uh, -peer system works, which peers to unchoke, uh, at what speed, uh, what data to allow others to download uh, and uh, by and large the goal is always to minimize the upload, maximize the download speed uh, and some sort of a balance. So there are several uh, attacks on B BitTorrent. So in fact there has been papers uh, written to how you can actually fool the BitTorrent. The first of them is BitThief. So as the name suggests, it is actually stealing the, uh, the bits uh, from a BitTorrent system. Goal remains the same, download files without uploading. Uh, and how, how does it uh, do it? So it actually asks the uh, tracker very frequently. So uh, if you see uh, the way BitTorrent uh, trackers work is that you, if you ask uh, the trackers, it is actually going to give a list of um, uh, peers from which you can download. So if you uh, uh, query that tracker too often, so that means that you are not using the uh, reference client, you are using some other kind of client which is uh, querying the tracker too often and therefore you are getting a, a list of uh, peer, uh, peers that can potentially give you uh, the files that you are looking for. And if your neighborhood uh, grows uh, very quickly, then you can actually exploit just the optimistic unchoking part. Maybe you are just uh, unchoked by those new peers uh, who doesn't uh, uh, really know you. It is considering you as a new peer and therefore optimistically unchoking you. And you can download it, uh, download the file that you are looking for and you never, never upload. So this can be actually uh, fixed slightly by uh, modifying the tracker. You can uh, make the tracker uh, a little smarter. If it is coming from the same IP address within 30 minutes, then you actually block it. But of course, uh, this, can be, uh, this can be bypassed by using a different IP address every time or randomizing over IP addresses. So this bit thief is essentially um, a paper in Hotnet uh, 2006. Uh, if you are interested, you can take a look at that. The second uh, strategic behavior is uh, uh, what is called the strategic piece revealer. 
So the how the ref, reference client works and this reference client we are going to assume that all the other neighbors, uh, all the other peers uh, are actually using this um, uh, reference client. It tells its neighbors about the new pieces and also uh, requests the rarest, rarest first. So for instance, if there are 10 uh, pieces and uh, uh, there are uh, there are certain um, uh, peers, most of the peers are actually looking for one and two, uh, then you already know that uh, this piece one and two are very highly demanded. Uh, if you are a strategic piece revealer and suppose you have these pieces, both this one and two pieces, uh, should you reveal that uh, versus some other user who is actually looking for eight and the piece number eight uh, and you are actually looking for piece number five and suppose all these uh, other users are actually having that file uh, five so whom should you trade with uh, notice that uh, this uh, um, uh, BitTorrent is nothing but a, um, a, a kind of a bilateral trade between this uh, between one specific uh, peer and the other peer and they are using this optimistic unchoking thing and other stuff but it is a peer to peer uh, uh, deal. Now instead of uh, sharing that you have this one and two and advertise them you are going to advertise as if you have eight so so that you can connect to that peer uh, who is looking for eight and get five from it. So you get your whatever you are looking for but in the process you are also saving that one and two which you know is highly demanded. So at the end possibly you can uh, keep others other people interested and you can uh, recover any piece that you are looking for because you have the most rare pieces. So this is essentially the strategic uh, piece revealer. This is something like an auction you are you are just saving you are keeping your monopolies and it has been seen that um, uh, in experiments this strategic piece revealer which is the solid line here uh, compared to the standard client or the reference client it uh, downloads all the files um, uh, almost 12% uh, uh, earlier than the than the reference client okay so let let us summarize that uh, this um, the peer to peer demonstrates uh, this importance of uh, game theory in computer systems Early systems uh, like the Nutella and uh, even before were very easily manipulated. BitTorrent is the first client which actually brought in this uh, idea of uh, repeated games uh, by breaking the files into pieces and using tit for tat which was quite successful because this is this is the principle through which the current peer-to-peer -peer system works but it still has some vulnerabilities but uh, it is uh, by and large a very successful example of incentive based protocol design so let us go back and uh, check whether uh, our peer-to-peer uh, -peer file sharing you can see that all the files are with all the peers now so if you just now add a new peer uh, so you can you can see that it has started optimistic unchoking from all the peers so uh, yeah this is a nice uh, animation uh, for for this peers